our uh, this thing, for example, is a gun sight controller from a B-29 bomber. It's got relays, it's got tubes, it's got gears, it's got everything. All these things here are World War II devices, and they compute things that are very hard to compute, but they compute them analog using gears and motors, because okay. that's how computers work. But these things are computing, for example, uh, things traveling through the air. You have an airplane moving this way, another airplane up here, you want to shoot bullets at it, the bullets don't travel in a straight line, they go up, there's wind going in there, and so these things are computing where to aim the guns to hit something, which is actually a very difficult calculation. I believe it. And the other thing that's interesting about these, if you look inside of these things, you know, there's a three-dimensional cam, et cetera, uh, well, we can build a processor these days, lots of people can, that has 100 million transistors. I'm not sure that anyone can build these things anymore unless they, we've lost the skill. So this is a good collection of, this is, for example, a computer out, uh, that took up a whole room, it's all gears and things, out of a battleship in World War II. These are pieces of it, but this was used to aim the big 16-inch guns. So you're saying these are the equivalent of processors? These are processors in World War II. There were no okay. computers in right. World War II. This is what, but these are things are doing processing and since they're taking inputs, they're calculating result and sending the result out. They're doing it with gears and motors, but that still is a calculation. And they're actually complex calculations. Uh, I won't go through it all, but these are, each one of these are the same kind of thing. These are navigation computers. This is out of a B-36 bomber. This is the uh, bombing computer of a B-36. And where did you get these? Uh, By them on eBay? Or? Some on eBay, some from, uh, you know, World War II surplus houses. This one is an extremely rare piece. I actually got this from a museum. Oh. By just talking to the guy and, you know, telling how interested I was and that kind of thing. Uh, these are, this is the analog computer, Little Baby, that I use to give demonstrations to people for how to program it. Um, Does anyone program or need to program analog computers today? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're the keeper of a dying yeah. art there. Yes. Okay. Uh, more military stuff. What's happening here, we're moving into modern day. This for, these things, this for example, this is a computer used in an F-4 fighter, which flew as recently, well, still flies today, but not for the U.S. 20 years ago, this was a so-called Phantom, F-4 Phantom. This was, it used these, elect this is its main computer. More military stuff. This thing here, which, this is a uh, computer that's used uh, steel on some U.S. ships. This is the computer, there's, uh, that takes its radar and aims its uh, anti-missile guns. It's currently getting a battle short here because it doesn't have any guns or radar attached to it, but it oh. works. You okay. can program it and play with it. This is, uh, there's too much stuff to describe here. This is the first IBM personal computer. Before the PC, there was this. It weighs 50, about 50 pounds. Holy cow. It's got an IBM built processor in it, a little baby CRT, but it was a personal computer you could carry it around and it ran basic in a language called APL. Here's an inf a, a great collection of core memories. These are all core memories. There's an easy one to see. But you know, before there were solid state memories mm -hmm. or magnetic core. These are a large variety of magnetic core memories. What time frame, what decade are we in right now? The uh, uh, 60s. Okay. The first IBM so um, part with the solid state memory was about 1971. Now here we go back even further. This is from, these things are from the IBM 704 uh, tube-based computer, which was really the start of the IBM computer family. Uh, uh, hundreds of different computers branched off and, and came out of that. This is from a later, uh, a later version. So, so okay. what would happen here? What are we looking at? Well, well instead of transistors, you have tubes. You're looking at, uh, this would be like an inverter. This whole thing here, one of these things here would be like a, uh, oh, more than a flip-flop, a couple of flip-flops together. That's a storage element. Okay. Maybe two bits of storage. Uh, 
and this are, is all I this, can cram today. This is all crammed in the space of. Well, if there, we have a, this. This is one transistor. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> at, mo at most, well, you could argue that that's two transistors, and uh, our chip uh, has got a hundred million. The one we're currently selling has a hundred million transistors. So, yes, these computers were big. They took up rooms. Um, Things. These are tubes from other IBM computers. I won't to uh, roar them more. This is from a say. This is a I part plug-in from a Sage, which was a giant thing IBM built for the Air Force. That was the uh, uh, anti uh, in the 50s. This was our uh, air tra air defense system computer. Okay. This these things up here. When I was in graduate school. Uh, these are the program for uh, IBM unit record equipment, you know, card oriented equipment. Everything was card oriented, and you programmed by wiring up this panel and shoving it in the side of the machine. And I used to do that. Card as in punch card? School. Punch card, yeah. Okay. Remember, even well into my IBM career, everything was punch cards. I, and for the first 10 years of my IBM career, I never saw a terminal. This is a com computer. <laughs> it's the world's greatest calculator. It actually does multiplies and divides completely mechanically. It runs, but it's lost. It isn't plugged in right now. And uh, when it runs, it is a uh, marvel to behold. And this is a, uh, and, you know, I mentioned to you that we like security here at Centaur, that we do security stuff on our chips. This is a Russian encryption device. It's a uh, modern version of a, uh, what's called an Enigma, which is the German's World War II mm -hmm. encryption device. This is a very summer thing, only it's very modern. This was used up until the fall of the uh, Iron Curtain. In fact, here I've got its manual in German from the German Democratic Republic, which was East Germany. These are, of course, funny computers, uh, slide rules, um, all kinds of funny slide rules. These are great if you want to calculate the effects of your nuclear weapon. Uh, oh, that's wow. what these <laughs> things do. See, here you can... Uh, See the exposure to ionizing radiation, uh, whatever we got here, reflected overpressure, incident overpressure, early fallout dose rate. Oh. I have several nuclear weapons calculators, so you, you want to keep them handy. I was about to say, right <laughs> after the, the bomb yeah. goes off, we yeah. can um, check that out. Uh, there's one there. Entry, exit time after burst. Time of entry is calculating radiation dose in RADs. Quite. This is a great calculator. When I was in college, all the rich engineering students had one of these. I was so jealous. But what is it? It's CURTA. It's a very interesting story. It's a world's greatest handheld mechanical. It's a handheld calculator, but it's fully mechanical. You turn the knob and it calculates things. And uh, the uh, Mr. CURTA was um, in a German concentration camp during the war and to keep himself sane. This is how the story goes. He invented this in his head and when he got out he built it. This was the Cadillac by far of calculators before there were electronic calculators. Before TI? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, you get the idea. And millions of things on the floors I haven't told you about. A control panel from World War II. Uh, but these are processors. They just aren't like our current processor, but uh, they're important because these processors were involved with uh, you know, defending the country. But they're also, um, you know, as I said, it wasn't until maybe 20 years later or so that digital uh, computers could do the same thing. Just to show an example, one more. This is out of the F-4 Phantom. The F-4 Phantom was our primary uh, fighter in Vietnam. Now, Vietnam may seem like a long time ago to you. It's not that long ago, and it is mechanical. Electromechanical. Wow. And that's, you know, in the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. This was